No doubt, at some time or other, you would have played with balloons, uh, perhaps rubbing them against uh, a woolen jumper or a piece of cloth, and noticed how it will then stick to the ceiling, or perhaps could be used to pick up little bits of paper, as if by magic. Indeed, the ancient Greeks, 2,000 years ago, had observed a similar phenomenon, when they took a piece of amber and rubbed it a piece of, against a piece of cloth, and it would pick up little bits of dust or fragments of dried parchment. But it wasn't until the 17th and more significantly the 18th centuries that natural philosophers, that's scientists as they call themselves, uh, began to investigate the phenomenon more systematically following the new experimental philosophies of science. All sorts of ingenious devices were created, including uh, great big balls of sulphur and glass spheres that were turned by handles to rub against leather cushions, generating sparks which would appear in the gap between electrical conductors. By the mid-18th century, the spheres were then replaced by big glass plates, a little bit like this one here, uh, which again would turn and rub against leather cushions, uh, generating those sparks. Not dissimilar in design to this 19th century successor. This machine was named after its inventor, James Wimshurst, a physicist and amateur inventor who in the late 1800s wanted to create a reliable source of high voltage electricity. Indeed, this machine is capable of generating anything up to 60 or 70,000 volts, accompanied by some impressively large uh, sparks. You can imagine that uh, in the 18th century, uh, the awe and wonder inspired by such an extraordinary phenomenon, um, and the speculation that accompanies it. Perhaps it was some kind of celestial fire. Uh, or perhaps uh, because of the wild appearance and the loud crack sound that the immediate comparison was made with that awesomely destructive force of nature, lightning. In the 18th century, one particular man stands out for his work in the early investigation into this phenomenon of electricity. His name was Benjamin Franklin, an American politician, philosopher uh, and inventor uh, and uh, a man who was a great believer in the Enlightenment, the power of reason and science to uh, improve the lot of mankind. The most famous uh, his story to do with his uh, electrical experiments uh, was his proposal to investigate the nature of atmospheric lightning. Quite simply, uh, his aim was to demonstrate that lightning was exactly the same kind of energy uh, as the electrical spark observed in the electrical machines, electricity. The experiment involved using a lightning jar, um, a newly invented device in the 1750s to collect and store electrical energy. It's quite simple. It's a glass jar with a metal layer on the inside and on the outside a wooden lid with a brass conductor and a chain that makes contact with the inner layer. To this Leiden jar, Franklin proposed to attach a kite which would then be flown uh, in the storm clouds. So let's imagine here is the kite string or kite wire uh, coming down from the storm clouds, uh, which his son uh, would be flying the kite. Uh, and we're going to use, instead of the storm clouds, the electrical machine. Uh, to represent the storm clouds. So here is the kite uh, and the storm clouds uh, and after a while you can imagine the storm brewing and the electrical energy would be collected from the storm clouds. Um, after a while Franklin would approach the lightning jar cautiously with his discharge tongs to see what was stored inside and would observe that spark. Uh, the release of energy collected from the storm clouds that was precisely the same start spark as from the electrical machines, uh, and therefore the same kind of energy, electricity. 
It was this realization that lightning was indeed a form of electricity that led Franklin to invent what was to be one of the most life-saving devices of the 18th century, for which he became famous within philosophical circles and beyond, the lightning conductor. A simple metal rod that would run down the outside uh, of a house into the ground, providing a safe conducting pathway for the electrical energy from lightning to be dissipated. Although there was very little other practical progress uh, in uh, electricity during the 18th century, it, it continued to fascinate and entertain public audiences. We can see in the museum's collection some wonderful examples of devices that were used in these public demonstrations, celebrating Franklin's invention, such as this firehouse, which was uh, it had a liquid inside it which would be ignited by a spark and flames would come outside uh, dramatically. Uh, and this exploding house uh, in which a charge of gunpowder would be ignited uh, inside. It wasn't until the invention of the earliest form of battery, the voltaic pile, named after the Italian physicist Alessandro Volta, that the study of electricity combined with the rapidly evolving field of chemistry uh, towards the end of the century led to a revolution in the study of a new field, electrochemistry. The study of the effect of electricity on chemical compounds and biological systems. It was a field of scientific investigation that seemed to be full of untold promise, akin to the genetic revolution of today that fascinated Mary Shelley and gave inspiration for her famous novel, Frankenstein. 